there is enough food, enough water, no hunger, no tiredness, no sorrow, no weeping, no crying, no sadness. Just laughter, enjoyment, and happiness all your days. That is what heaven is like. And from the generation we live in, there are so many Christian and pseudo-Christian beliefs that go against heaven, the party home of God. But I'm here to prove to you, beyond doubt, that heaven is indeed real. So I take my text from John chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3. I'll read quickly. Don't, I'll read from the NLV translation. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I wouldn't have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. When it's ready, I'll come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I'm going. Hallelujah. This is Jesus' promise of heaven. This is Jesus' promise that he's coming again to get us and take us to his father's home. So, quickly... We'll I'll be running through some tips, some, ver- some Bible verified facts about heaven. First of all, heaven is the dwelling place of God. Heaven is where God dwells. Heaven is where God rules over all creation, is where his throne is seated. And we see that in Psalms chapter 115 verse 16, where it says, the heavens of the heavens is the Lord's and the earth has he given to the sons of men. That's fact one. Fact two, heaven is paradise. Heaven is a place of indescribable joy, laughter, and happiness for eternity. Jesus himself called it paradise when he promised the thief on the cross that was crucified beside him that you be with him surely in paradise. Thirdly, heaven is the kingdom of God where God rules as king and is a place for where all those who are governed by God are destined to stay. We find that in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, which says, now all glory to be our, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, sorry, which says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior, which means that all those who are sit to have given their life to Jesus and who are willing to be governed by God, heaven is the place situated and situated for them to stay in. Hallelujah. Thirdly, heaven was designed and built by God. God himself was the one who built and created heaven. We see that in Hebrews chapter 10, chapter 11, verse 10. Time won't allow me to read it, so I'll skip it. Fact number four, heaven is where Christians go where they die. The Bible shows that in Philippians chapter two from chapter one from verse twenty one to twenty three. Fact five. Heaven Jesus as fact five, Jesus has been in heaven waiting for us since he died. We see that in the book of Acts. Chapter 1, from verse 9 to 11. Acts 1, verse 9 to 11. And he said, after this saying, he was taken up to a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of God, they said, why are you standing here staring to heaven? Jesus has been taken from you to heaven, but Sunday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So Jesus is waiting for each and every single one of us in heaven for us to finish all he has planned for us on earth and come and meet up with him. Fact six, all those that will be in heaven, that will be eventually taken to heaven, will live eternally with their mortal bodies. We see that in Revelation chapter two, verse seven. Revelation two, seven, and it said, Anyone we hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Everyone who is victorious, I will give to thee the fruit of the tree of life in the paradise of God. So which means that everybody who is, is, who is taken up to heaven will eat of the tree of life. 
that very same tree that God banned and forbade Adam and Eve from eating in the Garden of Eden, that will give grant them eternal life. That very same tree is what we eat of when we get to heaven and we will live internally. So, what will we do when we get to heaven? We wash, first of all, we worship God without any distraction, without any, any worries, any troubles. We will serve God forever. God said in the Bible that we will reign with him in eternity. We will help God reign over the entire universe and all that was created. We will fellowship with him forever. We are going to be talk, we will have enough time to talk with God, ask him all the questions I've always wanted to ask him, and be with him as because he himself promised that we the church will be his bride. And the bride has is destined to stay with her husband forever. So we will fellowship with God and know everything that is to know about him. We will learn we will learn forever. We will learn about all the things that have been hidden from us now. The, all the mysteries of the Bible that we have always wanted to know. How each of the prophets and the apostles and all God's, those God has sent made it in life. We will learn all those mysteries when we get to heaven. And finally, we will rest eternity, eternally without getting tired. It's a place of continuous rest where everyone is called up to be for us to rest for what we have, from the labor we have made on earth. Hallelujah. So, what was I, what was I do to, go, to get to heaven? It's a very simple a very simple task to get to heaven. Heaven is not like a five-star hotel where you have to pay millions of dollars to get in. No. Heaven just requires a very simple task. That is, you should surrender yourself to the government of God. God is a king, and he lives in heaven. And the king will only allow those that can submit to his government to live in his kingdom. So if you, have not, if you want to make it to heaven, you want to enjoy this paradise that I've been speaking to you for the past eight minutes about you must learn to be submissive to learn to be governed by god but learn to be under god's authority if god says do this you must do it if god said do not do this you must not do it and the only way to enter god's government is through jesus christ our savior through his salvation we see that in john 14 verse 6 and john 10 verse 9 john 14 verse 6 says jesus told him i am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father except through me and John 10, verse 9, John 10, verse 9, John 10, verse 9 says, Yes, I am the gates. Those who come through me will be saved, and they will go freely and find good pastures. God is the door to heaven. The King James Version says, instead of door, he uses gates. He uses, instead of gates, he uses door. Just the only pathway to heaven. If you haven't known Jesus, you can't go to heaven. You can't know God. So, the only way for you to enter heaven is through jesus and if you haven't met jesus you haven't known him as your lord and personal savior i'd like to say a quick prayer with me just close your eyes and say father i accept i have wronged you i know that i have sinned against you i believe in my heart that you sent jesus to, to the earth to die and save me so i can come be with you i confess all the sins i have made bef to before you that you made me you, you make me whole and put your spirit in me so that I can make heaven. I, asta, I accept to stand to stay under your government and believe that one day you'll come back and take me to be with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. For in Jesus' name I've prayed. If you just made that prayer now, you're a candidate for heaven. And God will be waiting for Jesus. The angels are rejoicing over you right now. And Jesus and God will both be waiting eagerly for you to come join them. So finally, before I close... What must we that have been saved do while we are still on earth? It's a very simple, very simple. We just wait for God to come and do everything we can for his kingdom to be established on earth. Because on the last day, he will destroy this earth and create a new earth. And his kingdom must reign on earth as it is in heaven. That's our job on earth. God, Jesus said, go ye therefore into the world. Preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that's our job on earth while we wait for Jesus to come back and take us. And I must assure you, Jesus is coming again. He's coming again to take us, each and every single one of us, back to be with him. He is waiting excitedly for every, everyone that has 
burdened themselves over, burdened themselves for him, carried their cry, his cross, carried his burden, wanted to come and be with him and rest. Jesus said it himself in our, in our text, John 14, verse 3. He said, when everything is ready, I'll come and get you so that you'll be with me where I am. Jesus himself wants us to be with him in heaven. So, we're going to pray two simple prayers. First of all, we'll say, Father, whatever you must remove from me that I may make heaven, please do so in Jesus' name. Let's pray that prayer for 10 seconds. Let's pray that God remove anything that is required for him to remove from us, any place he wants to remove us from, any set of people, any accessory, anything that God wants to, God must remove from us for us to make heaven, let him remove it from us. Let's pray he removes it from us. Let's round our prayers in Jesus' name. Secondly, we pray, God, anything must add to my life that I must make heaven. Any grace you must add to me that I may make heaven, add it to me in Jesus' name. Let's pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you add anything you will, anything that any grace you must need to make heaven to us. Anything that we require that will make us make heaven, we pray you add it to us in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to hear your word. Thank you for reminding us that heaven is real. We pray you give each and every single one of us the grace to make heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray, O Lord, that our hearts will be filled with joy when we see you again on the last day, when you welcome to your abode, in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed.